Uh, good morning, peace be upon you. This is Professor Sugar. And today what we are going to discuss in this video lesson is teaching in small group. A very important session and this corresponds to my chapter number 15 of my book on medical education. So let's start from that. There are certain characteristics which promote learning in students. More these characteristics are present, the more learning occurs in the students. These are active participation, face-to-face -face interaction, a clearly defined task of learning so the students and the facilitator or the teacher can concentrate on that. Preparation, both facilitator and the teacher and the students should come prepared for small group teaching session and reflection. There should be time during a teaching session that the students can think what information they are receiving. There is much confusion what will constitute a small group. Possibly a very good categorization has been given by excellent Dennis. He has categorized small groups into Tutor-led small group teaching, which are tutorials, seminars, problem-based learning groups, and small group teaching in large group, which are the practical groups, problem classes, and workshops. And in brackets, you are seeing the number of students which could be present in these. Let us clear these concepts. A tutor-led small group teaching is there is a small group teaching in which the teacher causes the student to learn and the teacher may cause students to learn either by means of instruction or by means of discovery it may be teacher led or it may result in student centered learning a small group teaching in a large group is the large group which actually has categorized more than 50. The large group are further divided into small groups for tutor-led small group teaching. What about tutorial? Tutorial word comes from tuition. A period of tuition given by a colleague tutor to a student or a very small group of students. Now that group of students could be even four, it could be six, it could be eight, or even could be more than that. A seminar is defined as a class meeting at a university in which a topic is discussed by a teacher and a small group of students. So there is one topic and that topic is discussed by means of teacher also and the students also. A practical group is a group of students who learn by doing practical work. PBL group, interesting. PBL group is a group of students that learn by using a specific method of teaching which is called as a problem-based learning. There are numerous methods of learning in which problem becomes the focus of learning but problem-based learning is when the methodology which is being used is that of problem-based learning and it usually is Maastricht's seven jump method. Workshop is a meeting at which students engage in intensive discussion and intensive activity on a particular subject. That is workshop. Important thing in workshop is Intensive discussion and activity on a particular subject, both hand-on and both discussion. Now, whenever, whichever type of small group discussion is being taking place, small group teaching is being taking place, may it be a tutorial, may it be a problem-based learning, may it be a practical, may it be a seminar, may it be a workshop, it is very important to set the ground rules first. Few important ground rules are 
पंक्चुअलिटी स्टार्ट एट फिनिश ऑन टाइम प्रिपेशन क्रम प्रिपेयर फॉर द डिस्कशन to listen and understand each other <clears throat> responsibility everyone has some responsibility for the process and the achievement of group aim therefore it is up to everyone to bring in other group members not just the teacher so therefore these ground rules are to be decided upon and agreed upon all and to be practiced very important thing is communication you see If you want to see the practice to be promote learning, they are face-to-face -face interaction. They are activity. They are talking to each other. That is the essence of small group teaching. So therefore, communication is very very important among the members of the small group who are involved in the teaching and learning. <clears throat> There are certain things which are very important when someone speaks. they address the whole group and not just the teacher make sure of this thing if a student is speaking he is not talking to teacher he should talk to the whole group use the word i to begin the contributions where possible so therefore if you raise your hand and you are asked you what is your comment to say i think not simply start that it helps in communication present reasons for disagreeing it is perfectly okay to disagree with someone says <clears throat> in fact disagreement generates more learning but the important thing is to tell the reasons for disagreeing criticize other arguments but not them as persons <clears throat> you may not disagree with the with the argument <clears throat> you may not you might like to not agree you may like to criticize but only the knowledge is criticized and the person is never ever criticized this helps in learning a very good teaching if if somebody has said something that the other person paraphrases it so that the group understand the same the person understand the same paraphrasing mean the person repeats the same thing which somebody has told in his own words so just repeat and someone speaks they address the whole group and not just the teacher use the word i to begin the contribution where possible present reason for disagreeing criticize others arguments but not them as persons paraphrase what the previous speakers has said actively listen to understand there is a difference between listening and active listening listening is just the sound is coming into your your ears active listening is that not only the sound is coming into your ears not only information is coming into your mind you are actively thinking you are actively trying to understand you are actively getting involved respond to others as well as initiate new threats so therefore it is important that you must respond if somebody asks you or you think it is good information to respond and in an in a, in a discussion of in a teaching always new threats could be started which will enhance the learning silence is okay especially if it allows space for others to contribute or for all it is very important to speak judiciously and it is important also equally important to remain silent also so that the teaching doesn't become a fish market ask for clarification if necessary do not shy if you don't understand anything you can ask in a polite way for clarification remind the ground rules if required and control the blocking students in every group there are certain students which have characteristics or they exhibit characteristics which block the learning they are the dominant who are the dominant someone continues to argue 
some doesn't speak, some trying to take over, those who are late, those who are sleeping, not actively involved. So therefore, control this blocking to tumor to students. That helps in learning. Just to repeat, actively listen to understand, respond to others as initiate new thread. Silence is okay, especially if it allows space for others to contribute. Ask for clarification if necessary. Remind the ground rules if required and control blocking students. <clears throat> now, teacher-led small group teaching group, it can assume many structures, many ways. This is a small group, you see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 4, 1, 4, all the 12 students, one teacher, total 13, and there is something to write screen also, would you call it a good arrangement? <coughs> You see, I told you, to have good discussion and teaching, there should be face-to-face -face interaction and everyone should be actively involved. By this sitting arrangement, that is severely compromised. So, teacher-led small group group structures, this is possibly a good teaching, a good sitting plan. You have something here, <clears throat> and people are sitting, students and teacher, round, because each one of them can see each other, and obviously there's writing board or screen on one side. This red dot shows the teacher. <clears throat> one structure of a teacher-led small group teaching is group round. What is happening? Any idea? Each person has a brief time, 20 seconds or to 1 minute, to say something in turn around the group. So the tutor, he ensures that all speak in a sequence, like a round, and everybody has a specific time period to speak on a topic. This is called as group round structure of small group teaching. <clears throat> there is another group structure which is called the buzz group discussion. What is happening in this? Can you guess? You see what is happening is the tutor has made this one subgroup, they are discussing among each other, another, 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 another. So whatever the topic or question is, the teacher divides them, the students, into groups and they discuss. Students should be asked to turn to their neighbors to discuss. Very simple method of converting a structure of small group teaching into buzz group discussions. What is happening this? These are snowball groups also. Students could be asked to turn their neighbors to discuss. Obviously it is happening. So what is happening is if you think of, initially there were these buzz groups, one, two, three, four, five. Once they have discussed something, then groups have combined, brass groups have combined together to form larger groups to discuss. Like a snowball. Because you see a snowball that rolls, it grows more and more. Snowball groups are an extension of buzz group. Pairs join up to form four, then four to eight. These groups of eight report back to the whole group. What is happening here? This is also a structure by which teaching can occur very well. What is happening? Can you appreciate? What is happening is the students are sitting in two circles. One is an inner circle, one is an outer circle. The inner circle is actively participating in discussion by means of bus group, a snowball or any method, 
and the outer circle is just listening. <clears throat> After some time, they change their position. And once this whole process has finished, then they all discuss. This is called as a fishball group. Fishball group configuration as an inner group discussion, discussing an issue or topic by the outer group listens, the roles may then be reversed. There are other also structures. One is crossover groups. Students are divided into subgroups that are subsequently split up to form new groups in such a way as to maximize the crossing over information. And circular questioning. In circular questioning, each group member asks a question in turn. So therefore, students are sitting in a circle. One student asks a question to someone else in the group. And second student asks an answer to someone else in the group. And this way, the process is repeated. The problem which is associated with small group teaching is, main problem which we believe is the teacher. The teacher has an inherent problem because teacher has a lot of knowledge, so he wants to express himself. It's difficult for a teacher to hold back unless he has trained himself. So therefore, a teacher do not conduct a dialogue, talk too much. That has to be taken care of. And the students, these are problems are, students cannot be energetic to talk except with difficulty. Does not prepare for the sessions, student dominates or blocks the discussion. And we all have experienced these things. So one should have these things in mind and then solve them during discussion. Techniques for effective facilitation of group teaching discussion. These are very good techniques which a teacher or tutor should follow during teaching. During <coughs> teaching. Ground rules. Ensure that the group members have agreed a set of ground rules. So important. Clarity of task. Students are clear about the task to be carried out. Answering questions. Don't answer the question at once. Try to reformulate it count to 10 silently before speaking again. <clears throat> so therefore, if some question is being asked, the normal tendency is to immediately give an answer. It's always a good idea to pause for a few seconds, think what the question has been asked, and then respond. Control the urge to speak. Look around the group. Look around the group during speaking and listening because you're not talking to one, you're talking to all. I hope this short video session helps you in learning. Have a good day, smile and see you again. Bye-bye. May peace be upon you.